And here's a definition that comes to us, and I thought that I've read through a dozen different dictionaries, and this was a good one, I thought. So I pulled it out of the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Grace is undeserved acceptance and love received from another. It is undeserved acceptance and love received from another. Cross Christ. I'm going to read out of the first section here, in the introduction. All four Gospels record the prisoner exchange between a notorious criminal named Barabbas and the Lord Jesus Christ. We know who Barabbas is? Barabbas was the man who was in a jail cell, and outside of his jail cell was an illegal trial that was going on under cover of darkness in which the Lord Jesus Christ had been beaten. He had been scourged, the flesh hung off his body, tattered. His face, Isaiah 52, 14, says that his visage had been marred beyond that of a man, that his face was so swollen and so bloodied that he was practically indescribable, and that had we stood at the foot of the cross and looked up and seen our Lord, we would not have identified him. And here is the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's Pilate giving the option to, to set him free. And what do the people shout out? Crucify! Crucify him! And when given the option to, to, to set free this notorious criminal named Barabbas, they offer, they offer to set him free. They offer to set him free. Now Barabbas was in jail for insurrection, murder, and robbery and was surely going to face death for his crimes. Luke 23, 18, Luke 23 verses 18 and 19 and John 18, 40 make very clear. Jesus, on the other hand, was innocent of all the charges brought against him. And Pilate, the Roman governor who presided as judge over the two men, knew it was because of envy, the biblical text tells us, that Jesus had been handed over to him to be scourged and crucified. And though Pilate was intelligent enough to know that Jesus was not guilty of the charges leveled against him and sought to have him released, he eventually revealed himself as a weak leader who surrendered to the insane demands of the mob who kept shouting, crucify, crucify him. Now, interestingly enough, and we talked about this, that all of this happened according to the predetermined plan of God. Barabbas was sitting in his jail cell when a Roman guard came, unlocked his door, and informed him he was free to leave. Now, can you imagine being Barabbas? Now, here you are in your Roman jail. What are you waiting for? Death. Because jails in the Roman system were not a form of punishment, unlike our yeah. penal system today. <laughs> yeah. It was not a form of punishment. I mean, either you were going to be set free or you were going to be put to death, by and large. And here's a man who pretty much knew he was going to die. And here's a man who's sitting in his jail cell, and one day he hears the key slip into the door, and the door opens, and a ray of light comes in, and a Roman guard looks at him and says, you're free to go. Now what do you think Barabbas thought? A joke? Yeah, ha ha, not funny, Mr. Roman guard. Can't get out of here quick enough before they change their mind. <laughs> Do you think maybe he thought he might have been a little suspicious of the guard? Because yeah. Roman guards could be cruel. Wait a minute. Yeah. I mean, big time suspicion. You know, am I going to make a run for it? You're going to stab me because maybe one of the people I murdered was your sister-in-law or something? You know, I mean, right. you know, maybe there's some personal vengeance here. I mean, you know, this guy's probably got to be suspicious. But here is a man who is guilty of absolute death. He, he des what does he deserve? Death. Right. He does not deserve the life or the freedom that he's being given, right? Yeah. He doesn't deserve it. And yet, what is being offered to him is another man, absolutely innocent, who is, who is, who is about to die in his place. Another man who is about to go to the cross and is about to die the death that this man deserves. And the freedom that, he is, that is extended to him is about to be paid for 100% by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. What every single person in the human race must realize is that your name is Barabbas. Absolutely. 
Every single person in the human race must realize that your name is Barabbas. And that every single one of us are guilty. There is not a single person born into this world that is not under guilt. That is not in some form of enslavement to sin and in a prison. And we must all see ourselves that way. Absolutely, we must all see ourselves that way. And I love the illustration of Barabbas. And too often when we, when, when we read through the biblical account of the Gospels, we often just sort of seem to just gloss over Barabbas and we fail really to, to see what's going on there in that story and really to stop and to think about that, of what's going on there with Barabbas. So when we think of the term of grace, where grace is, is undeserved, undeserved acceptance and love received from another, the writer goes on, he says, although the biblical words for grace are used in a variety of ways, the most characteristic use is to refer to an undeserved favor granted by a superior to an inferior. And by the way, it is a term that is always one directional. It doesn't go the other way. We never show grace or favor to God, for example, okay? As though somehow uh, he, he deserves that, okay? It, it's always one directional. So when used a divine grace toward mankind, it refers to the undeserved favor of God in providing salvation for those deserving condemnation. In the more specific Christian sense, it speaks of the saving activity of God, which is manifested in the gift of His Son to die in the place of sinners. Now, two passages immediately come to mind. One is Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And the other one is uh, Ephesians 2. Romans 5, verses 6 through 10, it says... And again, we've talked about this. We can, we've, I've been through this a hundred times, so this makes 101. And by the way, I, as I've made the comment before, I make no apologies for repetition. I think repetition is the key to learning. Uh, it's true in, in almost anything. It's true in education. It's true in sports. You get that muscle memory uh, down uh, to where you just get into the habit of doing things. I had a teacher you know, years ago say, you know, you've learned something when you can't forget it. Uh, and that's true as we learn repetitiously, as we go over the Word of God, and we become so familiar with it that we just have it ingrained into our thinking, that we just immediately know where to go on certain places. Uh, but we have to have that divine viewpoint perspective, and it's only in that familiarity with the Word of God that we get that into our thinking. Uh, so what is the human condition? Well, Romans 5, 6 through 10 gives it to us. For while we were still... Helpless, And there's, there's our first word that we can underscore. It's a very important word. It's for while we were still helpless. It's God does not help those who help themselves. That's, that's not a biblical concept. We can scratch that from our thinking. It's God helps the helpless. And the sooner we understand our place of helplessness, the sooner we can understand that we are the recipients of His grace. Okay? Okay. Uh, because while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the who? The ungodly. Okay, so there's our second word. So, by the way, this is us. Okay, so as we read this, as we read these terms, we need to be thinking in terms of me. Okay, so, so, so say, say when, we, when we see these terms, like helpless, put a little hyphen there and put me. Okay, when you, when you see ungodly, put a little hyphen off to the side, put me. Okay, so, good. Uh, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, hyphen, me, me right? <laughs> Christ died for us. Much more than having been now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. For if while we were enemies, hyphen, me, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. So when we think about who we are as helpless, ungodly, sinners, enemies, we are in this state... Where what do we deserve? Death. Nothing. Yeah, right, death, <laughs> right? And, and, and what is it that we bring to the cross? 
What is it that what what did God bring? God brought his his innocent, perfect, righteous son. What do we bring to the cross? We in effect we bring to the cross two things. We bring sin and death. That's what we bring to the cross. That's our contribution because Christ bore our sin and he died in our place. Okay? He died a death he did not deserve in order that we might have a life that we could by no means ever earn. Okay? And so our contribution to the cross was our sin, which he bore, and death, which he died in our place. 